In this video, we'll see how in one minute, using just one line of code, you can train super fast, super accurate object detection models using YOLO v5, get awesome visualizations right in your browser so you can share it across your team or your collaborators. You can get all of the results, interactive visualizations to show how your models are performing. You can hide and show all of the classes if you want. You can set the confidence threshold. Everything is interactive. You can also see how your predictions improve over time. You also get all of your metrics right inside your browser and of course your system metrics to see how much of your system you have utilized in case you want to utilize most of it. So with that, let's get started. Object detection is one of the most exciting and important use cases for deep learning. Although there are multiple very popular deep learning based object detection libraries such as Detectron, MMCV, one of the things that is common across the domain is they require some sort of development knowledge and some, some skill set, which is to say that there is somewhat a high barrier of entry. This makes YOLO v5 an exception here. One of the most important parts about this very popular library is that the barrier of entry is really low. You don't have to have a lot of development experience or deep learning research experience in order to get started with the library. Of course, you can do all of those things as well and customize this according to your needs. But if you're just here to get started with deep learning or object detection, you can just do that. Another thing uh, that is really important in this repository that is, is it comes with uh, a lot of ML ops features with the weights and biases integration. Now in full disclosure, I work at weights and biases, but this is not an ad. Why I'm covering this is because I have been an active contributor to this repository. As you can see, I'm, I'm here listed here as contributor. And so I've been mostly focused on building the ML ops side of integrations, which you can see here. So in this video, let's just get started with what's really the vanilla essence of YOLO v5, the goodness of that as combined with some of the basic ML ops features from weights and biases. And in the next ones, we'll cover more advanced stuff, which is, you know, making your object detection pipelines uh, resistant to fault tolerance and uh, data set visualization and gaining more insight from your evaluation and things like that. So with that said, let's just first get started. All right, so first thing that you need to do is just, oh, just clone this repository or download the zip if you don't know how to use GitHub, mm -hmm. right? I have it here. Um, so I'll just open it up. So we won't be looking at code here, so I won't be opening up uh, the editor. All we have to do is we can just work with the terminal itself. Right, um, so this repository comes with getting started collab, but for training, we won't be using the getting started collab. What I wanna do is make sure that I cover the basics first and uh, I make it in a way that it's easier for people to follow along. Of course, you can use this collab, but we'll use it just for inference, and I'll just go through the training process myself, right? Uh, let's come back to it once this is done. But by the time, let's just do some setup. In order to set up, you just have to run this command, which is pip install requirements. Now, I already have it installed, so I'll, I won't run this. So I'll just stop it and then it is completely optional, but for the use case that I'm going to show, you should also install want to be or WNB, which I think is also installed. So I should have just upgraded it. Right. Let me just clear this up. Now, in order to get started with the training, what you have to do is you don't have to run anything else, just you have to run Python, train.py, and I'll show you some of the commands here, uh, which, which the training. So I'll just show you some of the things that the training script takes, right? So first you can just, you have to run this Python train.py. Now by, by default, it will train on a very small data set, which is Coco128 taken from the Coco. Our data set, right? This is a list of 128 images, so it's a toy data set. And then you can, if you don't pass anything, it will be used by default. So let's just train on that. You can pass config of any of these models by default. It will train on, uh, it will transfer learn on YOLO v5s, which is small model, and you can set a batch size as well. 
Now let's just leave everything to default and let's pass in a project name. By default, the project name is YOLO v5 and in here, I'm just gonna uh, call it uh, data underscore coco128. Then you can also set the epoch. By default, it will run for 300 epochs. Let's set it to just three epochs. Because this is just getting started, we don't want a lot of uh, very advanced features. So yeah, I'll just show you what this is. What do you get with out of the box with Hilo V5, weights and biases and all of these goodness. And then, then we'll cover more advanced features, right? So first of all, that you'll think that, first of all, you'll notice that it creates a WNB run, which is on cloud. So you can just open it on a website. And then uh, as long as, let me just reduce the size right here. Right, so one of the things that is good about this is that it's not on your local server, right? So you can just share your dashboard with your colleagues and share your results. And there's a lot of other things that you can see. So first of all, let's just see it's, it has completed all of the epochs, which is three epochs. And let's see what we got as results, right? So let me just reload this page to make sure the data is synced. Okay, the data has not yet synced. Let's wait a second. Nice. This all right, so first things first, you get your metrics, which is the training metrics and the validation metrics and all of that. And one of the most important, one of the most important things that you get with WNB integration is that you get all your system metrics. So you can see how much of the system you have utilized, right? So just look at this, right? If I was using a very powerful GPU and I was paying it, and I was paying for it using some cloud instance, it'd be nice if I could make sure that I'm utilizing the maximum cap capacity of this this hardware that I'm renting because I'm paying for it, right? So in here, you can see how much power, how much usage of the GPU or the or the entire system, you know, CPU or memory and things like that you have done, right? So uh, here I'm, I'm using my local system. I'm not just paying for it. So I'm just not using a lot of my GPU, but you know, it's, it's a good information to have. And you can also see when you're just on the edge and you cannot increase the batch size further and things like that. These are the things. And then you also get some nice visualizations such as this interactive bounding box debugger. Let me just uh, increase the size here and reduce the number of images per column to four. Oh, okay, let me just write four here. And so you can see these are all the results from your, from each step, right? So at step zero, which is when the model starts to train, you get some of the images. And this you can use this slider to see how over time this has improved. Now you won't see a lot of improvement here because it's a three epochs, but you know, get the idea if you are doing some large uh, training, right? And then here you can just toggle this class score to set the threshold, which lets you know at what confidence threshold you can sort of deploy your model in, into production, right? So you can, I can do this, I can hide specific people. If I don't, sorry, not specific people, but specific classes. If, if I don't want to look at things that my model is doing good at, uh, I, I, let's say person is being detected all the time. So I just hide that and I just look at the classes that my model is not doing very good so I can improve that, right? So all of these features you get out of the box with WNB integration. Uh, now, now we also have uh, this inference. So let me just show you, it's really easy to run inference as well. So to do that, you just have to run Python detect.py and all of these things are sort of optional. So I don't want this uh, confidence, but it's by default. I don't want to set the image size. I don't want to set the weights because again, it's by default set to YOLO V5S, which is small. Now let's just run this inference. You'll see it will just load the default data set, default model and everything, and it will just run it. And you'll get a similar output from, uh, and you'll get a similar output like the one that is being displayed, that's static. Let's just generate a new one. So let it do its work. As you can see, it's as simple as that. Now one more thing, we're not done here. Once your model finishes training, It'd be good to have your model so that you can share the train model and use it in your other project or maybe just make it public, publicly available. So with the default integration with weights and biases, you also get artifacts, right? Now this artifact is the final model that has been stripped of all of the things that are, in, all of the information that is useful for resuming the training. So it cannot be resumed. So it's a final train model. You get this best.pt. And you also get an API, which you can use in your code anywhere to just use this, download this and use this, load this uh, train model, right? You also get a graph view, uh, which is uh, which is just a picture of your pipeline, which shows how 
the models are generated. Now, if you explode this, right now we just have one run, right? So there's just one training job and then there's just one model artifact. But if you run this multiple times, as we will in the next videos, uh, you'll see that this expands further and, and you, you can make sense of where these uh, artifacts come from. Awesome. So this is the very basics of Yolo v5 and some of the MLOps goodness included. And now the next step is to cover the more advanced features.